We got any docket in this place? I don't think so. What about the uh, Slayer? Union Local 883. Happy mustache to you. Happy mustache. Edward, would you be so kind as to come on up here and recite the Union Pledge? Sure thing, boss. <laughs> oh, fair and hairy mustache that sits upon my lips, your greatness is ever present from your center to your tips. No matter what my change of life, no matter what my change of heart, my awesome bushy mustache, and I will never part. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Edward. Rocco, you'd be so kind as to come on up here and read us the minutes from last month's oh, meeting. Of course, absolutely. <laughs> April meeting of the Mustache Growers Union, Local 883. 7.03 p.m., Edward recites the Union Pledge. 7.04 p.m., Rocco reads the minutes from the March meeting of the Mustache Growers Union, Local 883. 7.05 p.m. Floor is open to comments, questions, and suggestions about our mustaches. 9.14 p.m. Larry motions that we take out insurance policies on our mustaches. <laughs> Melvin seconds. Motion passes unanimously. 10.38 p.m. All mustache talks are over. Meeting is adjourned. Floyd vomits in the nearest garbage can. <laughs> Thank you, Rocco. All right, boys. Well, normally this is the point of the meeting where I open up the floor to comments, questions, and suggestions about our glorious mustaches. However, as I'm sure many of you all have noticed, we have a new face sitting here with us tonight, and I'd like to take the proper time to introduce them to you all. Hector, you be so kind as to stand on up there and tell us a little bit about yourself. <clears throat> okay. Um, hi, I'm Hector Longbottom. Um, I'm assistant manager of the Radio Shack on Phipps Street. And uh, I've been a mustache grower now for seven years, and I'm very interested in becoming a member of the Mustache Growers Union Local 83. Thank you, Hector. It's certainly a pleasure to have you here with us tonight. Now, Hector, there's a very good reason why we invited you here to join us. You see, not just any old fool with a little bit of hair on his <coughs> upper lip can join our ranks. <laughs> Each and every member of this here union has demonstrated clearly, time and time again, his unwavering commitment to his facial hair. <laughs> you see, all of us have experienced some form of discrimination simply because of our mustaches. We have been mocked. We have been judged. We have been ridiculed. We have been persecuted. We have been physically hurt. Larry, show them scars. <laughs> See those scars, Hector? Yes. Larry here was shot four times in the chest during the Great Mustache Riots of 1986. Why? Because Larry had a big, beautiful mustache. That's why. But we have not buckled under the pressure, Hector. We have not given in. We have not given up. Why? Because we believe in the power of the mustache. That's why. That's right. We believe in the power of the mustache. And now, Hector, we're going to determine if you believe in the power of the mustache. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to come on up here. We're going to ask you a few questions. And your answers are going to help us to determine the veracity of your belief in the power of the mustache. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Then get on up there and face your destiny. <laughs> Hector, 
How often do you trim your mustache? Uh, every two days. How often do you clean your mustache? Every day. Are you married? And if so, does your wife mind your mustache? Yes, I am. And no, she doesn't mind. Does your wife have a mustache? No, she does not. <laughs> what is the name of your mustache? Gertrude. Have you ever been persecuted for having a mustache? Of course I have. If Burt Reynolds' mustache and Tom Selleck's mustache were to get into a fight, who would win? Uh, Tom Selleck's would win, although Burt Reynolds' would put up a fight. Without pausing, spell mustache backwards. E-H-C-A-T-S-U-M. Grecian formula or just for men? Grecian formula. What's in your CD player at home right now? Robert Goulet. Worst moment in mustache history. Hitler. When is the best time of the day for mustache maintenance? A uh, half hour before sunset. Do you give out mustache right? No, I don't. <laughs> although I have in the past. If you could nominate any living person for president, who would it be? Ted Turner. What is the perfect temperature for mustache growth? 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. Have you ever considered growing a goatee? No, that's ridiculous. <laughs> would you ever donate your mustache to science? I would, but only if it were to help find a cure for a mustache cancer. <laughs> if God himself asked you to shave your mustache, would you do it? <laughs> oh, that's a trick question. God would never ask someone to shave their mustache. Oh. <laughs> Bravo, Hector! Congratulations! You have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that you truly do believe in the power of the almighty mustache. <laughs> However, there is just one more little itty bitty test that you must pass before we can officially grant you membership to our glorious you. Yes, what is it? Oh, look, everyone! Sam Elliott! Where? Oh, holy shit! Hector! Oh, Hector? Oh, I cannot believe it. You come in here! You come in here! With a falsy! And expect to gain membership to our union. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't think you'd notice. Didn't think we'd notice? He didn't think we'd notice. So you're going to lie to us for all this time and think that we weren't going to know this. I'm sorry, I mean, I just, I, I, I knew it was too good to be true. I so want to be a member of the Mustache Growers Union Local 883. But I can't grow a mustache. I see all of you with your big, beautiful, hairy upper lips. And you're all so brave and powerful and successful and I just want to be just like you guys. But I was born without a mustache gland. <laughs> now I can never grow a mustache of my own. So I'm sorry I did it, but I only did it because I love you. <laughs> you know what? He's right. I, I mean, don't you see? If we discriminate against Hector because he can't grow a mustache, then you know, we're no better than the guys who discriminate against us because we can grow a mustache. Yeah, maybe we need to look past the facial hair and really see what's inside people like Hector. Uh, he would grow a mustache if he could. Uh, he seems to know all there is to know about mustaches. He's certainly not anti-mustache. He's more pro-mustache than a lot of people I know with mustaches. <laughs> I, say, I say we give him a second chance. From now on, I motion that the new members of the Mustache Union need not possess a mustache, but must merely be in favor of the mustache cause. I second. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Well, I guess it's unanimous. Aye. Congratulations, Hector. You're a member of the Montana Pro Union. Local eight in the meantime. From then on, the Mustache Growers Union, Local 883, started to accept more and more non-mustache people into the union. They quickly became one of the most pronounced symbols of diversity, unity, harmony, and acceptance throughout the world. Until a week before their 25th anniversary, when an anti-mustache militant, who gained membership into the union by slipping through the initiation process, brought a razor to one of the meetings and shaved every last member of the Mustache Growers Union Local 883, all the while screaming, Die, you mustache-wearing faggots! Die!